In this video, we will be configuring a port forwarding rule on a FortiGate firewall. And the idea is that it's gonna look something like this. We have a remote client that's trying to communicate with an internal web server that resides behind the FortiGate firewall. And we wanna access this over the public internet. So take a quick screenshot here of the uh, topology that we're gonna have and let's get into the config. All right, so let's just take a look at the server resource we're trying to access. So this is me accessing this machine internally, this server resource internally, but now we wanna access it externally. So let's just configure it now on the firewall. Okay, so we will go to policy and objects, virtual IPs, create new, and then let's just configure a, you know, HTTP web server virtual IP. We wanna bind it to the interface that the traffic would be coming in on, which would be WAN1 in this case. And we can see that the WAN1 IP address is 166.166.1.2. So we're going to put in the IP range here, 166.166.1.2. That's the IP that we wanna hit from the outside. And then we're going to map that to 192.168.112.2. Now, one interesting note here is let's say that we did actually configure some other IP. What if we had more IP addresses that were given from our ISP, such as 166.166.1.3, for example? Well, as we can see, that IP is not actually the IP address that's configured to our WAN1 interface. That is not going to be a problem. The fact that we are going to be configuring this IP address and associating it with WAN1 is pretty much the exact same thing as configuring this IP address as a primary or secondary IP address on WAN1 itself. So just a quick side note there, but let's go back to configuring it as 166.166.1.2, which is the same IP as WAN1. Now, if we didn't add any further configurations at this point, such as this port forwarding option here, what we would be doing is creating a one-to-one -one NAT between this external IP address and this internal IP. This could absolutely be what we are trying to achieve, but in this case, we want to be able to access various external services that the firewall will be hosting. So in this case, and probably most cases, what you were gonna wanna do is create a port forwarding rule. And uh, you know what I wanna do is just have the public facing IP address just for this test, or sorry, the public facing port be 8080, and then we'll map to port 80, which is the actual port that 192.168.112.2 is listening to on its web server, and then 8080, and this public IP is where we're going to, what we're gonna actually type into our browser when we're accessing it from the outside. Okay, let's submit our changes and then let's go to firewall policy and create a new policy here. So the direction is going to be in the direction from WAN1 and our outgoing interface is going to be our internal interface. 192.168.112.2 is the IP we are trying to reach, the end server IP. So let's just type this as VIP HTTP. Again, VIP stands for virtual IP. In this case, we are going to just specify the service as being all, which is any IP address in the world. You could um, specify this to be maybe a, a specific source public IP or maybe a geo, geo, geographic range. Uh, but in this case, we're just gonna keep it simple and make it all. And then the destination in this case, that's going to be the VIP object that we just created, HTTP web server. As we can see, there's the configuration we just specified a moment ago. And let's select the service as all. Now it's no problem to select the service as all because even though we are saying all here, the port defined in the virtual IP 8080 on the external service port, that is going to be the only port that you're going to be allowed to use to match this firewall policy even though the service is set to all here. Now what we'll do is we'll disable NAT. This is so that the end server can actually see the public IP address that's reaching the server. You can absolutely enable this, but then that would mean that the server is going to see the IP address of the FortiGate, which in this case is 192.168.112.1. So let's disable that so we see the source public IP. And let's hit okay. All right, now let's give it a test. So again, here we have we're going to hit 166.166.1.2 with port 8080. And then we want that traffic to map to 192.168.112.2 port 80. Let's try it out. There we have it, it works. 
Now, just a couple troubleshooting tips here. Uh, one to start here would be looking at the bike counter. So we wanna make sure that traffic is actually matching this firewall policy. In this case, firewall policy ID is number five. So if we see that the bike counter right now is 10, about 10 kilobytes, uh, let's refresh this page and then we can click the firewall policy here. Okay, we saw that that value increased, right? It, we can be semi-confident here that we're hitting the right policy. Now, if you don't see that bike counter incrementing, it could mean that maybe the implicit deny policy is being hit, which is at the very bottom, uh, which means that the traffic is being denied because this policy is not configured correctly, or potentially in a larger environment, maybe you have a firewall policy above this that is in the direction of WAN1 to internal that would be getting matched, in which case you could just take this policy and try and drag it to the top and test it out again. Again, just, just try and do this maybe during a, a maintenance period so that you don't affect any existing production services. Another item that we can do, as always, is going to be to run a packet capture. So if we were to you know, look at our WAN1 interface and we're gonna be filtering for, let's just go port 8080 for simplicity here. You can further define it if you'd like, but in this environment, it should work out. Let's start that out, run that test. Okay, there we go. We can see that packet on that interface. We can also do the equivalent by creating um, a new filter and then looking on the internal side if we want to see the internals perspective. But uh, in this case, let's just look at the WAN perspective. We can see bi-directional communication. And finally, another item that we can do is if, if we have traffic set to allow all sessions, then we save our configuration there. And again, yeah, that's on the firewall policy. And we run a couple more tests. Now we can go back to our FortiGate, go to our log and report section. Uh, we could filter further for these specifics, but in this case, uh, let's see if we find any type of match. We know what the policy we're looking for, which is policy five. So that's all policy one traffic there, which is not the correct policy. So let's just go policy ID and type in five here. There we go. Okay, so we do actually see that policy match and we see information on the right side there about what's happening with that traffic. We could further specify a source, destination, and, and that kind of thing there. All right, and that covers things. So, um, you know, stay tuned for the hairpin NAT tutorial as well as um, SSL offloading tutorials, which I'll link right in this section once they're available. And aside from that, thanks for joining and we'll see you in the next video.